Get your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free. A macro is a little program that you create in a visual environment that runs a series or set of operations in a specified order. For example, an access macro could check the value of a form field and then open a corresponding report based upon the value of the field selected. When you write macros, you will need to know both the actions, what to do for each step in the macro, and the arguments, which are additional settings that specify more exactly what you would like the actions to do. To make macro creation easier, Access comes with a macro design window. The window consists of two panes. The upper pane is called the Action pane, and contains a design grid that's similar to the QBE grid. The design grid can contain up to five columns, the Action, Arguments, and Comments column, are displayed by default. In the action column you actually can cl click and select one of the many actions that are available that you want the actual macro to perform. In the lower section called the action arguments pane you will enter any additional settings that the selected action needs in order to function into the appropriate fields in the action arguments section. Depending upon the type of macro that you're creating the arguments will vary considerably. Some actions simply require that you define more arguments than others do. Many have default arguments that you can change if you wish. Some arguments have no default value, but instead allow you to enter in your own expression. Also, some arguments are required for an action to work. So for example, if you select the open report action, then you must specify the name of the report to open. So as you enter the arguments into the boxes available in the action arguments panel, the values will be displayed in the Arguments column. Note that Access displays help about the currently selected argument at the right of the Action Arguments pane when you have the argument selected. If you click into the Argument box in the pane and then press F1 on your keyboard, a Help window will appear and lend you even more assistance in specifying the arguments needed for the selected action. This can be very helpful when you're programming macro behavior. Then next, you would move to the next line and continue selecting the next action to perform and what arguments it's needing. Once you've finished setting all of your actions and arguments, then you'll have your macro completed. It's that easy. So if we click the Create tab in the ribbon, click the Macro button, let's say we wanted it to open a report and then beep could choose open report and you can see down below the report name the view that you would like to use any filters or where conditions that would restrict rows and the window mode and then if you wanted it to beep you just click down to the next row choose the beep no arguments at all there now once you've created your macro, you should save it so that you can run it in the future when needed. When you're creating programs, they're usually designed to be run multiple times, so give it a name that will help you remember its function within the database. Now, you can run a macro in a few ways. You can right click on the name of any macro on the list displayed in the navigation pane and then choose the run command in the pop-up menu to run it. You could also simply double click on the name of a macro shown in the navigation pane to run it as well. Also if the macro is open in design view you can click the run button in the tools group on the design tab of the macro tools contextual tab in the ribbon in order to run it. Now editing macros are very easy. You just right click on the name of the macro in the navigation pane and then choose design view from the pop-up menu that appears to display the design view of the macro. And here you can change the macro actions and arguments as needed and then save it again to run it. Now once you have the report 
well in this case the macro that runs the report once you have your macro operating appropriately you can then consider doing something else with it like adding it to a command buttons on click event within a form so that you can click a button in a form to run the macro like what you see pick up your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free